Too many children left behind. Exclusion in the South African inclusive education system. This is the name of a report by a non-profit organization, Section 27. The report documents widespread violations of the rights of children with disabilities, particularly in the Um Kanyakude district. These violations are so severe that it is clear the dual racial and disability apartheid in South Africa's education system persists. These realities, described in detail in this report, exact a very heavy price on poor black children with disabilities in the Um Umkanyakude district and uh, amount to systematic violations of their constitutional rights to basic education, equality and dignity. One of the uh, authors of the report is joining us in studio. His name is Silomo Kumalo and it's a pleasure to have him. Welcome. Thanks so much for being with us here on the program. Thank you so much, Liam. Uh, Your report touches on a, a 2011 judgment of the High Court with a focus on this particular district in northern KwaZulu-Natal. What made you focus specifically on this? Um, what made us uh, focus specifically on this is um, we have been in that community and we have um, parents of children with uh, disabilities who were either uh, in special schools or were either out of school because they couldn't access those special schools. So therefore we then, um, after meeting with these parents and working together with a, um, a, a DPO, a Disabled People's Organization based in that community, we then um, decided that we have to engage on this study. Um, and um, that required us to look at the inclusive education policy, White Paper 6, um, in order to visit um, the special schools and the full service schools uh, in the district. So it, it basically uh, it was a cry from the parents uh, that made us um, to be in that community and focus on this area of work. Yeah, I, I mean just for viewers, just to, to, to give them an, an understanding, you, are, are you, you're visually impaired? Yes. Um, what is, what is your, your ex exact diagnosis? Are you can you see anything? No, I am a totally blind, totally um, blind. person, and this okay. kind of work is very close to my heart. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So I mean, you are you 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 live it. This yes. is this is your everyday. I mean, Precisely. what was it like for you? I mean, obviously you speak a lot from experience and write and, and offer experience in this report. But for you, growing up like this, trying to get an education, um, you will recall that um, last year we released a report called "Left in the Dark." Um, and the, that report detailed the conditions, the poor conditions in all the full, um, the special schools for visually impaired learners across the country. Uh, there are 22 of them, and myself and uh, Tim fish Hodgson, whom we co-authored this report, visited all the full, uh, special schools um, and released that report. So that report detailed the kind of conditions that we faced um, when I was still um, in the special schools. Um, problems around um, abuse, problem around inadequate um, training of teachers, teachers not being able to read braille. Um, the kind of issues that come out of this report, the one um, exclusion in, in, in inclusion education, um, are the same kind of issues that came out of that uh, report, but that report focused specific, specifically on special schools, while this one went mm. broader and started looking at the full service schools, which are um, the mainstream schools that are supposed to be supported in order to accommodate children with disabilities, or I would say learning barriers and disabilities, one of of the learning barriers. Yeah. Just very quickly, we are, we are running out of time. Yes. I mean, some of your, your solutions include meaningful consultation with relevant public stakeholders, including people with disabilities. Certainly. What, what would you like to see happening? I mean, just, just in, in a nutshell, because I mean, w what we're seeing is, is, I imagine, some constitutional violations that are happening. Certainly. Um, um, uh, Leanne, the thing is that this policy is a, is a very a great policy, but what we have to look at is to sit down um, with all the relevant stakeholders and start discussing 
how to go about implementing um, this inclusive education policy or how we can go about reviewing it in order to make it uh, possible to implement uh, if the situation on the part of the government is that um, there are no resources and so forth. Because I honestly do believe that um, things such as teacher training don't require resources, um, but they just have to be trained in order to be able to teach learners with disabilities. Issues such as um, house mothers in, 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 in hostels, they just need to be trained in order to be able to care for children with disabilities. Yeah. So I think we need to sit um, around and, 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 and around a table and start discussing these issues All right. going forward. Thank now, you. I, we can find that full report on, um, I think it's uh, section27.org.za. Yes. Uh, you can go in there and you'll, you'll be able to navigate and find your way into this, uh, this particular report on uh, Um Kanyakure, the uh, report final. It's there. It's PDF version. You can download it, have a look at it. And this, of course, is going to eventually become something national, but this is focusing on this particular area in northern KwaZulu-Natal. Thank you for talking to us. Siloma Kumalo, one of the authors of the Section 27 report on exclusion in South African inclusive education. Thank you very, very much for being Thank our guest. Thank you so much, Leanne. All right. Let's take a break. We'll